Hello, welcome. In this video, we're going to be talking about similar triangles, how they're typically proven to be similar, and how we might use that information. So let's go over this. First of all, similarity is indicated by the tilde right here with this symbol. And we could use three angles or even just two angles to prove similarity. We can also use two proportional sides and an angle in between or three proportional corresponding sides for similarity. So this is saying, for example, in the first one, if I have two triangles and I know that their relative angles are equal in measure, so the, the angles in the same relative positions are congruent, then the, the two triangles are definitely similar to each other. And then over here, it's saying, well, actually, if you know two, then you know that the third must also be the same as well, and you have similarity. And this, again, this one's saying not so much that the side lengths are congruent, but they're at least proportional to each other, and the angle between, though, uh, must be the same in both triangles. And then finally, again, I'll just repeat it, if you know that you have proportional side lengths, you have similarity. So let's, let's look at that. I think having a visual is really important. Uh, this first one right here I think is great. Kind of centered, and I, these are all from GeoGebra. This one is from Tim Brzezinski, so thanks for doing this, Tim. Two great triangles here um, of different sizes. That's the important part. They're not the same size, but they're similar. And how do I know that? Well, I have one pair of congruent corresponding angles and then another pair. And sometimes it can be tricky to figure out where are the corresponding angles, right? Like it's getting a little bit trickier now, where is it? But they'll be labeled in some way. You'll be able to figure it out. But the idea is if the angles are the same, you can slide one shape right onto the other. It'll fit exactly. And that's what this is showing. Let me go back and do that again. I think like this, bring that over. So this is saying, hey, if I take this triangle and slide it so that they, these two angles line up perfectly, I tilt it a little bit there. Okay. And then you can see as we start to slide it up and scale it in size in every direction, eventually it does fit the other triangle perfectly. The two angles fit. So as long as you have two of the angles, you've got the similarity. Over here from Azucena, thank you for making this one, you have multiple examples of it. You have these two triangles, and in this case, you can change the scale factor, whatever you're multiplying the side lengths by, to whatever you want. I'll choose two. All right, so we're doubling each side length. Get to two, there we go. So 10 is doubled to 20, five is doubled to 10, and the angle between is 45. These are definitely similar triangles. All right, and there's the third side. All right, how can you see it? Well, if you take one of the triangles, you actually take it, and then you can drag the point until you're convinced, I like this right there. I can see, finally, at this point, I'm convinced, yeah, those are the same triangles. and you can change the, the side lengths AC or whatever. You can see the larger triangle will change with it. As long as the angle in between is congruent between the triangles and the side lengths are proportional, you have similar triangles. And finally, here's another one from Tim Brzezinski. You've got side, side, side. And so here's one triangle, here's another, and there's a scale factor. You can change it. I'll, I'll make it one half. And the idea is that if you know that the corresponding side, so this orange side to this orange side, a, this blue side to this one, and then B, this green side to KB, this green side over here, they're all cut in half. And what you then have are similar triangles. And you can see that he's highlighting that there are two angles here that'll be, uh, that we will be able to transfer into a larger triangle, which means they must be similar, right? So this one, he's just showing it fits perfectly, and that one fits perfectly there. And once you have that set up, you have established that you have similarity, right? So that's the idea here with different sides. Okay, if you have the proportional ratios. what? How will you use this in, in a problem? Well, sometimes it's just about proving directly that things are similar. Sometimes it's about showing that you have proportionality between side lengths, and then other times you mess around with this proportion. So like you get a statement like this, which is just saying that AB times DF, this cross product right here, is equivalent to this cross product, which is sometimes referred to as the, when the product of the means equaling the product of the extremes, the means being these middle values, um, sorry, uh, these middle values multiplied equals these extreme values here, right? So on the ends, essentially, think about if you were this as a ratio, you'd see that, and that's what this one is saying. 
So we'll look at an example of that. Uh, we'll also look at this kind of standard problem as well. Let's start here. So if you're given two triangles, let's say you're told that these triangles are similar. If you were asked to find the length of x, you could use the proportionality of the side lengths to solve it. So let's do that. I'll go to my little um, template pad here, right? So you don't have enough information to solve this yet, so I'll start to give you the information. Uh, first of all, you're told that you have similar triangles. Let's write that down. So triangle B to C to A, this triangle here, is similar to triangle E to D to A right there. E to D to A. Once you're told that, you would then be given some information about the side length. So for example, um, I'll say that E to A, you, you would be given a side length, let's say that it's 15. And then A to D, another side length here is nine. Then on the other triangle, maybe you're told that from A to C is 12. And if you're asked to find X, you wanna think about this full length here. So if these two triangles are similar, we know this full length, so BA to CA, that ratio would have to be equal to EA, right, to this, and then to DA here. So the ratio between these two sides would have to be the ratio between this larger side to this shorter side, and you could rearrange that. You might say, well, I don't like that, Sean. Okay, well, you might think of it about as, excuse me, BA to, so the longer side of the bigger triangle to the longer side of the shorter triangle at, uh, as EA, of course. And then that would be, have to be equal to the ratio of CA over DA here. But if you look at these two things, uh, one can only be true if the other is true. And you can see that if you just kind of swap these two terms, that's all that's happening here. Uh, and these are actually saying the same thing. So work with any proportion um, between side lengths or of the two triangles, or look at side lengths of the triangle and compare to the side lengths, the same corresponding ratio of the other triangle, whatever works for you here. Um, I don't think that necessarily matters which one we use. Uh, I guess I'll use the second one I think that is one that would be more natural to use for many people. That is, you can't see that. So uh, B A to E A. So what is B to A? Well, it's this unknown distance X plus the 15 down here. So it's X plus 15 and E to A is just 15. And that has to be equal to C A over D A. So C A is 12 and D A is nine. So let's just solve for x. I'm going to multiply both sides by 15. 15 and divided by 15 on the left, that cancels to 1. And then we have 12 times 15 over 9, which is just 180 over 9, which is 20. And x plus 15 equals 20. So x equals 5. So the value of x is 5. If you're asked for the whole length of BA, it would be 20. And you could check that. It's basically saying the ratio of 20 to uh, 15 equals, oh, I won't go right in there, it's confusing. For the, the ratio of 20 to 15, what am I writing? Fix that, Sean, come on. Sorry, so 20 to 15 is the same as 12 to nine. And those are equal ratios, you can see that. Um, right. If you if you divided them or reduced them both down, you would get the exact same thing. This would be four to three, and if you divide everything by five, right? Twenty divided by five is four. Five fifteen divided by five is three, and divided by four over here, divided by three over here. Excuse me. You get four over three. These are the same ratios. And this, I mean, this is just a quick problem. But the idea is that in many examples, all you're doing is comparing the ratios between the side lengths. Now let's look at a proof. So say you're given this parallelogram CDEF prove, and you here's the statement, it's some type of product of the means equals product of the extremes. So you might pause the video and try it on your own, but press play and then we'll solve it together. Okay, so in, in our proofs, typically we have some kind of statement and then some type of reason. So first of all, let's restate that we have parallelogram, that's my parallelogram symbol, CDEF. 
and that is given, right? So C to D to E to F. So this is the parallelogram. And you can see, look at the silence we're trying to relate. Let's just kind of highlight this. So DH right here times EF, okay, uh, up here has to equal EH times DG. So EH, where is that? Okay, right here times DG here. And you can see once you label that, we want to compare this upper triangle to this lower triangle. So how can we do that? Well, we're given that we have a parallelogram, right? So we know that these side lengths are parallel to each other. So let's say that FE is parallel to CD. And how do we know that? Well, if you have a parallelogram, then opposite sides are parallel. Okay. And if that's true, then this line is a transversal. And so is this line right here, right? So by extension, because you, you can extend, extend CD, this is CD right here. We can assume it's extended. And then this is also part of that line. So now we have a transversal coming down here, which means that angle one and two are congruent. And then we have another transversal coming across here with angles three and four as the alternate interior angles of a parallel lines that are also congruent. So we can make that statement. So angle one is congruent to angle two. And let's say angle three is congruent to angle four. Why is this? Well, if you have parallel lines, then alternate interior angles are congruent. Okay, well, what does that mean? Well, look at this. We have two pairs, so one and two, and then three and four are two pairs of congruent angles. So we have similar triangles. So the top triangle, we'll say HEF, HEF is similar to triangle H, so one and two correspond to so HDG. And well, why do we know that? Well, we have angle, angle. If we have two pairs of uh, congruent angles, then we have similarity. Okay, so we have all this information. Well, what can we say? Well, um, we have similar triangles, so we know that the ratios of their sides are in a proportion. What ratio do we want to use? We want to use the ratio that gets at the thing we're trying to prove. So the ratio of DH, where is that again? DH is here, over, well, let's say uh, EH. Sorry, I pressed the button there on my tablet right here. The ratio between those two sides, DH to EH, would be ha have to be equal to the ratio of, let's see, let's find what we need. We need to look at DG in this triangle down here. DG, sorry, this is messy, 2EF right here. Don't press that button, Sean. All right, so we'll write that down. Equals the ratio of DG to EF. Okay, so what did we just do? Well, we use the fact that we have similar triangles. So if you have similar triangles, then, well, the corresponding side sides are proportional. That's what's really happening here. And then finally, in six, we can rearrange this and just say that DH times EF equals EH times GG. And the reason is that the product of the means equals the product of the extremes and that's it all right well this is just a brief intro into similar triangles and how you might use them in some standard problems and how we can establish that we have similar triangles i hope this helped thanks